gas fitter exam cramp session video 15 okay so this American Schrader snifter valve the valve that you see on your car's tires the air valve this is the same valve we're going to use so let's say I did pump it up to 30 I'll take my tire gauge. You're pumping up your tires. You want to make sure that you pump them up right. You didn't over or under inflate them. You're going to take a gauge. You're going to actually see for yourself. What do I have in the tire? Make your adjustments. Adjustments. Same thing. Put your tire gauge on this. Check to see. I put my tire gauge on there. Uh-oh. 30. Right? Release the excess air. Bring it down until you get to 3. Your test pressure. Once you get to three, awesome. Now you open up your valves and you're not going to blow out your gauge. And you make sure it's a perfect three for yourself to you're satisfied. And the testing begins. And of course, since we're using a five pound gauge, there's only one, one pressure, one max pressure this system could be at. Half a PSI, right? Okay. <clears throat> uh, question 14. An auxiliary drain pan shall have a minimum depth of, went over this, inch and a half. Actually, no, we did not go over it. We went over how, how much wider than the appliance that's sitting inside of it should be. And we said that the auxiliary drain pan should be three inches wider. So if we were to imagine that water heater sitting in the middle of a round pan, the pan itself is going to be and we're going to sit it in the middle, right? Perfectly in the middle. It's going to be an inch and a half on each side. And I like to phrase it that way, in addition to three inches larger overall, an inch and a half on each side in our mental picture of it, because if it's an inch and a half on each side, that helps us remember how deep is it going to be. An inch and a half. Okay. Uh, question 15. Purging operations introducing fuel gas shall be stopped when? What percentage of fuel gas by volume is detected within the pipe? Okay, so um, for this, in this case purging, you can purge to remove fuel gas or you can purge to introduce fuel gas. Let's say uh, once again we, uh, we isolated we shut off a system, we isolated it because we're going to work on it. We're done working on it. Uh, it's been inspected, passed. We've been given the green light to turn everything back on. So now we have uh, the isolation valve to the piping. A significant amount of piping, either because it's very long or very large or both large and long to an appliance we're at the appliance waiting to see if the gas is going to get there you know waiting because uh, until the gas gets there the appliance is not going to start on it's not going to ignite we can check for flame check for this check for that right so the gas is being introduced into the piping the piping is a considerable length and size so that gas has got to gradually push that air out through the port and the appliance before finally we can get combustion how long do you want to spend on that well if you don't want to spend any more time than necessary you probably got you're going to want to purge okay you're going to want to uh have a have somewhere where you can open a larger port get more air out so you're going to purge so that now you have ready gas in the piping so that you don't have to depend on the small port of the appliances you're going to do one general purging of the larger uh, larger distribution piping so this entails using the actual fuel gas we want to you know, uh, we could say prime, we want to prime the system, like you prime a pump, you want to prime the system. Pump, a pump works well when, if it's a water pump, water's already in it. The system, we want gas already in it. So this port that we're standing by, 
as we're waiting with our gas detection equipment, your nose is not enough. Gas detecting equipment, you know, some kind of electronic device calibrated for the specific gravity of gas such that it's going to beep when you have a certain percentage you're looking for and we're always looking to uh, avoid any uh, hazardous dangerous situations how much gas is enough gas coming out of that port well 100 percent gas probably in keeping with uh, this vein of the code probably is not the right answer you know full 100 percent gas we probably don't want that but we also don't want so much air in the system that checking every single appliance through the smaller ports is just going to be an unnecessary pain in the ass. We're going to stop the, pur we're going to shut the valve. In other words, stop the purging. When our gas detector reads 90% gas by volume. So 90% gas, 10% air, or, you know, uh, if, the t if we had not uh, done anything with the system since the test, maybe we used nitrogen. So 90% gas, 10% nitrogen, whatever. But it's going to stop at 90%. So that's an excellent number to remember because, well, where else did we well, already erased, but where else did we see 90? We saw that if we we're going, when we're testing coated or wrapped piping, we must test with at least 90 PSI. Here, it pops up again. When we're purging, when are we going to stop purging? We're going to stop purging at 90 PSI. Now, because purging is something, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a little, uh, I would say it's probably one of the I think it's the hardest table to memorize and it's one of those things that it's not readily available to our mindset. It's not something we, we deal with constantly. Let's see. Maybe we can infer from the table itself why it's something that the average gas fitter is not really coming into contact with on a regular basis. Well, when do we start purging? If we look at the purging links at our convenient table in the back page 132 again, we're going to see because the, one of the first things we did was we looked at the table for our, our upper and lower limits for the sake of memorizing it. Say, well, what's the lowest, what's the smallest, or what's our lowest limit? Two and a half inch piping. So we're going to observe these uh, piping lengths starting at two and a half inch piping. Okay? So we don't even really have to worry about uh, 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 lengths of piping and purging um, uh, the greater uh, body of purging details until we start working with two and a half or greater piping. Okay. Next question, question 16. Leaks detected during a gas test shall be located with, we got a leak on the system, how are we going to find it? Um, a gas detector a non-corrosive leak detection fluid matches. It matches kind of sounds wrong, okay? But on the test, we never take anything for granted. Under stress, stuff that just is obviously wrong or ridiculous or stupid or silly or how could you possibly fucking pick that as an answer? Well, under stress conditions during a test, yeah, you, you can easily pick answers that you know if any other time it's like you would never pick that answer so I'm not going to take it for granted right now we're going to reaffirm what our instincts would tell us is if we're looking for a gas leak on a system that already has gas in it no no source of combustion you know no matches I mean that's 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 uh it sounds, it sounds stupid, and let's just reaffirm that it is. So on the test, we never even consider it as an option. Yeah. Gas detector, yes. We already s talked about using gas detector to determine 90%. I don't see how you could determine 90% with your nose. You would need a calibrated instrument to tell you that. Or a non-corrosive leak detection fluid, bubbles, bubbly stuff, anything. 
go mix some dishwashing liquid with water or whatever. Anything that'll bubble up, spray it on, bubble, bubble appears, boom, there's your leak. Question 17. When 8 inch gas piping requires purging, all right, two months from now or when you're, when you're taking the test, the minute they said 8 inch, that shit hit you because 8 inch really doesn't pop up anywhere else. 8 inch pipe, we talk about big pipe, but we don't specifically state 8 inch. Alright, the minute I saw 8, I said, oh, this is uh, any length. Or a trick question, any length, right? You do the question enough times, you, you look at the tables, you learn, you use your, you know, you invoke numerology, you get these numbers into you that some numbers just trigger an automatic mental response. I saw eight inches and I said, I have a feeling there's gonna, there's gonna be about purging and it's gonna be any length, but <clears throat> until you get to that point, Keep keep uh, keep uh, working with uh, the tables till you get them perfect, and I'm already knowing like don't even bother look at the answers. My choice has got to be one that says any length. When eight inch gas pipe requires purging, it shall be for a length greater than okay none of the above. Eight inch or larger gas piping requiring purging shall require purging at any length. Okay. Question eighteen. All except what shall support gas piping? Okay. Um, if you've already noticed one of the, one of the other bigger tables, the important tables that you must memorize by heart is the supports, uh, support intervals. Uh, I feel we're going to be getting close to that, so there's going to be another diatribe on how to memorize that particular table. But first, let's start off with. How do we support gas piping? Well, we're plumbers. We're going to support gas piping the way we support any other piping. It's going to depend on the piping itself and general workmanship. All right? And general workmanship alone should already tell you we don't hang pipe off other pipe. Not professional. We don't do that. That's, that's just, you know, that's just veering more towards the artisan aspect of being a skilled tradesman, a craftsman, you know. There's, you know, there's your, ba you know, there's your basic body of knowledge, there's your work ethic, there's also, you know, come on. It, a professional wouldn't do it that way, we know. And the code already has a blanket statement in general administrative code and in any administrative uh, chapter prefacing the, uh, the particular code you're working with, general workmanship, okay? That implies we, they don't have to say it, we know it, and they're depending on us be working in a professional manner, okay? So we're not going to be using other piping. We can use hooks, straps, brackets suitable for the piping, you know, the material, the size, etc., but not other piping. Question 19, for other than dry gas, and uh, well, that's all we do, dry gas, no more wet gas, but let's say we have wet gas. Piping shall be sloped not less than one quarter inch for every how many feet? Be careful because as plumbers, uh, we slope our waste piping per foot, quarter inch per foot, you know, uh, half inch per foot, eighth of an inch per foot. In gas piping, it's a quarter of an inch per foot, the most common we use, right? And it's going to be for every 15 feet to prevent traps. So every 15 feet, if I start at 15 feet and I go, if I start at one foot and go 15 feet, by the time these two points, if we look at these two points, put a level on them, we're going to see it dropped a quarter of an inch. Good. Forward gas, it's wet. You want the water to slope down all the way to the lowest point, which in a wet system is going to be your drip leg, your sediment leg, your dirt leg, whatever you want to call it. Okay, question 20. Vents are not required for gas pressure regulators. Less than 
one and a quarter inches nominal pipe size that are equipped and labeled for use with vent limiting device. We went into detail or at least uh, uh, fleshed out what a vent limiting device was. It, it's, uh, it's going to, let the regulator itself, it gives off gas. It's going to take that gas that's been given off and release it at a certain rate so that it never produces an explosive mix in the area it's in. If you have a regulator with a vent limiting device and that regulator is less than one and a quarter inches, let's pay attention to less than again. One and a quarter inches is important. That number must be learned, okay? And you're going to learn it. It's the little off. I mean, how often? One and a quarter inches is that pain in the ass size because, well, you always have one inch stuff. You always have inch and a half stuff. You're always going to have an inch and a half to one or a one to inch and a half. Whenever you're dealing with inch and a quarter, it's, it's that in between size, that little bastard size that it's, all, it's always, you need it, but it's just not something you need all the time like you need one inch, an inch and a half. Um, and it's always that size that like, you know, it, I mean, come on, you, you, you're a mechanic or a journeyman and you asked, you know, you asked your help or your apprentice to bring me an inch and a half fitting. It's that size they're always going to bring you every now and then an inch and a quarter because unless you're absolutely used to it, it's too easy to grab the inch and a quarter because it's so almost like inch and a half. It's that size. Okay. You know. You know, you know, you got, you got a, a, an affair or a group or that, you know, everything's good, you know each other, you're having fun or whatever, but then you got that guy, you know, it's like you, you, you had to invite him and you had to include him, but it's that guy, inch and a quarter is that size. So, now that I'm done saying that might help you remember inch and a quarter on the test because you remember he said something ridiculous off the ball off the wall he he went again into one of those uh, segues and, and I'm not sure what he was going for but I seem to remember inch and a quarter so okay but now that we know inch and a quarter the numbers are always the most important thing that's the limit now, what's the wording? Less than. So, what does that mean? Does that mean that when we get an inch and a quarter regulator with a vent limiting device that we don't have to run a vent? Absolutely not, because that could be a question on the test. Is a vent required to the outside air if for an inch and a quarter regulator with a vent limiting device? I'm telling you right now, with or without it's required, because it's only less than, it's only sizes underneath. So, what is the large, here's another way to phrase the question. What is the largest regulator you can use with a vent limiting device that will not require a vent to the outside air? The answer would be one inch. That's how they're gonna get you on this exam. That's all of this work, I gotta lay a foundation for you. You gotta get the basics down. But the final step, the, 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 what you gotta walk away with is knowing every single pitfall based on the wording, the phrasing of the, the questions. That's where guys have been having issues. And I'm talking guys who know this stuff and did study and yet, it became an issue because of how they word the questions. I'm already showing you. Okay, question 20 is lifted from the code. I'm using the exact code wording of the code. They will do that. They will give you exact sentences from the code and you pretty much are filling in the blanks. Not a problem, as you can see here, but they're also gonna give you questions like those two I just made. You know, one, asking you, is a vent to outside air required? for an inch and a quarter regulator with a vent limiting device. It's like, yes! Is a vent to outside air required for a one inch regulator with a vent limiting device? No, because the code itself 
that, which is its own question, you'll answer less than inch and a quarter. Because they could give you this sentence, I make these sentences such that, you know, um, you're going to look at them and I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying to give you baby steps in there. Right now, this sentence, you can see right now, 20, my main goal was for you to get the number first, okay? Later, I might give you this question, and I'm not giving you sizes. I'm giving you inch and a quarter, like the choices could be, because I'm going to eliminate less than from the question itself, and now in the question choices, I'll give you four choices, and I'll say, you know, you, you'll remember, oh, I know inch and a quarter, but now I'm going to ask you, inch and a quarter only, less than inch and a quarter, more than inch and a quarter, or a vent is required for all regulators regardless? That question's a little harder now, because now, wait a minute, you remembered inch and a quarter, but you didn't take the time, you know, to every time you saw this to reaffirm or to remind yourself, well, is it less than, at, over, etc.? And now, you could still get it wrong. You knew inch and a quarter, you studied, but you still got it wrong because, uh-uh. Is it at inch and a quarter? Is it less than inch and a quarter? But that's why I keep harping on this. That's, that is going to be the main brunt of your mistake. You're gonna study. You're gonna study very well. You're gonna go in there. You, I, I will be the first one to say you are prepared, but it's still not enough for this test. These little tiny things are what they're doing to trip you up. And now you know right from the start. Keep that in mind because it's, gonna, it's, it's not going to be an issue since you start early and you're paying attention to it as opposed to you didn't pay attention to it and then, you know, just a week before the test, now you're noticing that or at the test, now you realize you should have paid more. No, we do it now. So less than an inch and a quarter with vent limiting devices. Question 21, inside gas meter piping operating at over 15 PSI shall be installed in a properly vented meter room of three hour fire rated construction if greater than how many inches uh, nominal pipe size? Four inches. That's a lot of, that's a very, very boring question. There are going to be some questions that I rate them as difficult only because this is just a, this is such a detail. This is such minutia. Um, you know, we're talking about high pressure piping. We're not even in chapter four now. This is coming from, um, this is coming from appendix, uh, appendix G, which deals with uh, high pressure piping. If you didn't know that, I even had to think for a second. Doesn't matter. The main thing is we covered where, what appendix, and this is a question on the test or can be. You know, it's been a it was a question on mine, may not be on yours, but it's there, it's available, anything's fair game. What appendix do we get uh, meter piping information from? Appendix E, because E for meter. So, there's only one other letter you got to remember, and that would be G. And, well, there's only one other appendix I gave you that was for high-pressure gas, so must be G, right? High-pressure gas. Ooh, gas has a G in it. G, appendix G, right? This one here, um, I, I, the only trick I can say is there's no real trick. This is one of those questions I, I hate because it's just... It's so freaking boring, and it's just a lot of wording and a lot of minutia, and fine. Okay, so let's just remember. I'll write it down just so, you know. Uh, memory is aided. It's, it's, you, the more senses you use, the more sensory input you use for anything, the more likely it is you're going to remember it. So fine, let's just write this up. Inside gas meter operating at over, okay, so over 15 PSI uh, shall be installed in a properly vented meter room. So by this, by this venting, they mean um, this, is, this verges onto the tin knocker 
and that's also a misnomer because the tin knocker is working with sheet metal and that sheet metal is coated with just like galvanized piping to prevent corrosion it's actually coated with zinc okay the only thing that is really coated with tin is a tin can a tin can is not made of tin it's made of steel but it's coated with tin um, not on the test but since we're on the topic zinc um, it's not coated a tin can is not coated with zinc because the zinc is going to leach into the food and zinc can easily become toxic for you welders out there you know that you really don't want to work on galvanized steel because the minute you heat it up with the with the arc or the flame it releases a poisonous gas you know um, so you want to work uh, if you're going to weld it you want to do it in outdoors and uh, from what I understand drink a glass of milk beforehand supposedly that helps with that but if you don't have to weld galvanized metal you, you, you're better off so uh, this venting is the room itself is vented to allow for intake and exhaust air combustion air uh, a change of air but this falls into a section of the code that's not on the exam. There is a section, there are chapters in the fuel gas code and the mechanical code that deal with duct work, but they haven't been touching upon that. Okay, maybe one question from there, which I have in here that you will see, you will have, not, not something to harp on, but this is the venting they're talking about, the actual duct work. So, we're venting this meter room, um, of three hour fire rated construction. So, three hours. So what's the fire rating? Uh, we'll just say rating. Three hours. If greater than, once again, not if four inches or larger, but greater than four inches, okay? So, if greater than that's the greater than sign greater than this is greater than that less than sign this is less than that greater than or equal to less than or equal to I like to use these signs so in case you see them in the in the future videos you know what they are it's a lot easier than writing greater than or, or less than greater than Four. That's about it. You're just gonna have to remember that. Um, right, like I said, more sensory input. That's why writing your flashcards is a good thing. You want to write your flashcards because you're looking at it, you're writing it. Some guys talk to themselves when they're studying, so you're hearing yourself talk. All of these things go a lot, go a long way in retaining information. So. If we're dealing with a meter setup indoors, over 15 PSI, the room it's in, the meter room's got to have a three hour fire rating. In other words, the fire could burn for three hours before the, the elements of its construction, the walls, the studs, or whatever, start to burn away. It's got to be able to resist a fire for three hours. That's a lot. That, that, that's 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 a that's a pretty tough room if the meter and the piping is greater than four inches I'm not gonna spend more time on that because like I said um for now it's enough just to realize this is something it's not fun but you're gonna have to memorize it those are the numbers okay since I spoke about flashcards, um, flashcards, flashcards uh, force you to use more than just one of your senses to create them. Thereby, as you're creating them, you have a better chance of retaining the information. There, uh, you know. Um, I actually include in the a uh, physical copy of the book, a sheet here with information to make more flashcards on the gas. It's a little advanced, don't worry about it right now. 
If you want the digital version, it's on the PDF page that you 